Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, if you're a subscriber, if you're not a subscriber, welcome to my channel. My name is Rachel. I do everything anti-aging, uh, beauty, and I suppose generally health and beauty information for us older uh, ladies. Um, fine wines as I like to call us. Fine wine ladies, vintage, right? Um, today is a bit of a tricky subject because not a lot of people do videos on it and they don't do honest to God videos on it. And it's the menopause. The M word that nobody talks about. Um, and as I particularly find in Ireland they don't talk about it. When I lived in the UK they talked about it more. Um, even in Spain, Spanish women would talk amongst other women about it a lot more. Um, so you kind of had a heads up here, it kind of creeps up and you go, what? Hang on a minute, what happened here? How did I get this? What's going on with me? So um, I do beg your pardon if you can hear a worry in the background, I have a fan because it's really hot out today and it's really hot in this cabin um, shooting. So it's just, it is as it is. You'll have to bear with me, I'll try and speak louder. Um, yeah, menopause sneaks up on you. I, my first experience was I was kind of di got, I diagnosed um, perimenopausal at about 37 years of age, 38, I think it was about. That didn't surprise me because my mother went through it very early. She started perimenopausal, I think, right after she had my brother when she was 36, my youngest brother. And I just remember her being like, I swear to God, there were some nights I thought, this woman is crazy. What's going on with her? I remember coming in late one night and she'd given out to me saying, you're not staying out late anymore. And I came in late and I crept into my bedroom, you know, and it was like about an hour late. And she bloody threatened me with a knife. She was, God rest her, I'm sorry, mammy. Um, I'm trying to help other women with this, not to diss you. But she just lost it. She And it wasn't until I went through it that then I started understanding, yeah, hang on a minute. This is, I can see, you feel totally irrational. So be prepared. Um, as I said, I was diagnosed perimenopausal. I do maintain it was the marina co coil I got put in. I didn't like it. It didn't sit comfortably inside me. I could always feel it, especially if I was wearing at the time, which was fashion, lower rise jeans. Um, <clears throat> I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. I had to have an adjustment on it once or twice. And in the end, um, I felt it was making me very hormonal. So I, I had it removed. Um, once I had it removed, about a year later, I st suddenly started getting massive migraines. I had never suffered from a headache in my life, not even a mild headache. I had very, very easy periods, never sick, never down, n no postmenopausal. I think I cried one day after I had my son. That was it. I didn't have hormonal swings. My ex-husband used to say he wouldn't know whether I was having my period or not because I was just a bitch all the time. <laughs> no, I just put him in his place because, you know, you have to with Irish men. But, so I kind of felt, this is not right. This is migraines and I'm suddenly getting migraines at my age. I went to my doctor and of course he gave me the response. It's probably hormonal, which of course we don't like to hear because a lot of times with us ladies, like, you know, we come in with a broken arm and they tell us, you know, are you pregnant? Are you hormonal? You know, and you're just like, Pursh off, you know, but there's a reason behind it. And sometimes they are correct. Um, I noticed changes in my skin. Um, I noticed I was tanning less. I was very, very dark. Like I could tan and I go very, very dark. This is me right now with no makeup on and I've got white light on my face. So I'm actually a very dark skinned person. Um, comparable to Irish, but most Irish people and that is the mix of blood I have. I do have a bit of Italian thrown in there. So I kind of noticed that I wasn't getting the tan as quickly as I was and I was going redder and then going brown as opposed to just going straight brown. That didn't bother me, I just thought it was unusual. There was an awful lot of symptoms like feeling tired sometimes, cranky sometimes, you know, just over the period of time. This went on from the time I was about 37 till I was 47. So yes, it can last for 10 years and I was the lucky one. Some people get it for two days, some people get it for two years, some people per perimenopausal for five minutes it seems. And I didn't take anything, I thought to myself, do you know what I'll do, when I'm down in Spain I'll get some low dose hormone patches and I'll put them on my arm when I start the menopause. Because you can buy them over the counter, down there. So I thought that's what I'll do. And I was very lucky when I was going through this in Spain, I had a lady, a friend who was older and she was guiding me through it and she sort of heads me up to certain things but didn't head me up to 
a lot of the emotional stuff that comes with the menopause. We all talk about symptomatic things like, I got night sweats, I got this, I got that. It's the feeling. It's the feeling, okay? So perimenopausal, I came out of fine. Um, I was absolutely fine. I had a really bad breakup with a really horrible man who, if you remember, gave me this. <laughs> That was worth it, I'll tell you, that was worth it. And I'll be honest with you, the lesson I learned from that man, well, boy, because he's not really a man, the lesson I learned from that boy, um, that 43 year old boy, was, mm, yeah, brilliant. I'm now a university in the School of Men. Um, so I'm a graduate, I have a diploma, degree, masters, you name it, PhD, right? So I broke up with him, it was tough, it was a tough breakup. Um, he was a horrible, horrible human and there was a time where I kind of thought I have to get him out of this house fairly rapido because I found out a lot of stuff about him, got rid of him, that was fine. It dented my confidence more than it should have because I was actually happy when he left. I was angry at him because he was a lying, cheating bastard, pardon my French, kids don't, don't use this language, but he was, he was absolute scumbag um, and I got very angry at him and that anger coupled with rising anxiety levels I didn't know what was going on in my body. I didn't realise I was about to hit into menopause full on and I didn't realise it. So I was very stressed, very angry. I couldn't express how angry I was. And like I've been broken up with before with, with one guy who was the love of my life. Um, and a month or two after crying, you're back, you're bouncing, you're grand, you're fine. But this I couldn't share, that was all sorrow, this was anger. It was sheer rage and I have never felt rage like that. And I have to say, I know people who live with that rage and I don't know how they do it. I really don't know how they do it. it this was this black tightness in my chest that just would not stop. Um, I put it down to him, I tried to work it out in the gym, I lost a lot of weight, I look great. Far different from, I look now, from what I look now. And I just thought, this is the way to do this, this is the way to get over this. And I was on the contraceptive pill. I'd been on the contraceptive pill since I, from the time I was 46. So I'd been on the contraceptive pill. Just after I had had a scare with a previous boyfriend, I went on the pill and I went, no, <laughs> going on the pill. So I went on the pill just in case he, as the man says, uh, in Ireland. <laughs> that's, a that's a phrase in Ireland. Only Irish people will know that one. It's about a very naughty bishop <laughs> who had babies with everybody. <laughs> anyway, um, back to menopause. Um, I decided then, you know, look, I'm, I'm just going to work through this. Whatever this is, it'll be fine. And I tried to work through it. I actually will hold my hand, hand up and say I went to counselling because I couldn't deal with the anger and the rage I was feeling. I was angry at the world. I was angry at the universe. I was angry at him. I was angry at the girl he went back to. Do. And she's, yeah, crazy dude, crazy woman too. Um, I didn't want him back. I wasn't interested in him. And part of me was very happy that the two of them were together, you know, killing each other as they do. Um, but me, I was going, how does this happen to me? How does this keep happening to me? And I just couldn't get rid of the rage. What I didn't realise was I was setting into menopause full on. And because I was on the pill and I didn't realise, I didn't know because, you know, you're not getting regular periods anyway. You're getting very small, light periods and that's it. So that January, I got up on the 22nd of January at about 10 o'clock in the morning, I woke up, tried to text my friend Suvi, hi Suvi, <laughs> and it, I just was like I was drunk and I couldn't focus. And I put it down to the fact that I really had the urge to go to the loo. I was dying to go to the loo. So I put the phone down and I said, ah, oh, I'll do that in a minute. I have to go to the loo, I have to go to the loo, I can't focus. I can't focus, I don't know about anybody else. If I'm dying to go to the toilet or I'm dying to eat, move out my way clear the buffet table right I'm coming and so I just said look do that and you'll be fine I got up out of the bed and I collapsed and fell over and I had no idea why I thought I tripped on something on a slipper or wherever it may be um didn't really know fell over I thought right I'll get back up I couldn't get back up couldn't had no power and I thought to myself I've been in the gym last night I pushed 60 kg on a on a a foot on the foot bench on the press you know the leg press whatever it's called and why is this happening why can't I get up so I tried to G.I. Joe it to the toilet because I was in urgent need of a toilet um, I couldn't I didn't know why I shouted to my son who was in the bedroom next to me he came in and I said I can't get up 
And he said, are you all right? And I said, yeah, but I just can't get up. I don't know what's wrong. So he said, okay. And he lifted me up and he put me in the bed. And he said, smile, ma'am. And I smiled. And he said, lift your hands above your head. And I lifted my hands above my head. I thought I did. I thought I did a great job. And he said to me, ma'am, I think you're having a stroke. So he said, will you just hang on? I'm going to ring an ambulance. I said, okay, grand, fine. I didn't care. I got the ambulance straight away. I was strapped into a chair and brought down the stairs, still dying to go to the toilet. I destroyed myself in the hospital, obviously, because I was losing functions and controls. Um, everything just went and shut down and let go. I vaguely recollect being examined in an ACE hospital and told I was having a stroke. And I was like, yeah, that's the great thing about having a stroke, is you're like, yeah, whatever. It's kind of like you're drunk, is the best way I can describe it. Or the morning after you've drank a lot and you're still wobbly. It's a bit like that. That's kind of, I would now know the warning signs. Massive headache. That was the one thing I do remember when I woke up. I felt like I'd slept in a really hot room with no air. But I hadn't, it wasn't that hot. It was January. It was freezing. Why, you know? The headache got unbearable. I was ushered over to um, Beaumont Hospital. They have a program in conjunction with NACE Hospital, which is a thrombectomy machine, which saved my life. Undoubtedly, that and my son. Um, they whipped me in straight away. They put a tube into your groin and they send it up to an artery that weaves all the way up here and goes into your brain. I was having a right brain stroke, so my left side was gone. And they literally pop it in. He's looking at a monitor, guiding his way through to suck this clot out straight away. So gone are the days where you'd have to have an operation, they'd have to open up and everything like this, or they'd give you warfarin or something, high doses of warfarin. Um, which is basically rat poison, high doses of warfarin to thin the blood very quickly to dissolve the clot and you'd be waiting for the clot to dissolve, that could be a couple of hours so it could be eight hours, it depends on the size of the clot and it does more damage, more residual damage. I have no residual damage. Sometimes I think when I walk too far I feel a slight, I'm a little bit wobblier, I can feel that the muscle tone in my left leg is a little bit less than my right leg but it's not, I've no limp, I've nothing. I was very, very, very blessed I came out of that the way I did. And I came out of it with cognitive functioning. And yes, I do have memory lapses. People say, do you remember we went there in, in 1983? And I go, I don't know, I can't remember. I can remember a lot of things, but I can't remember some things. It's fine, they're not important things, okay? So I woke up um, six hours later, sitting up in hospital. I was fine, I was happy, but I was exhausted. And I felt like I'd run a marathon with Mike Tyson beating the shit out of me along the way sporadically so it was tough I woke up and they couldn't see why I do have genetically high cholesterol but that's a genetic feature and they discovered right there and then at that um, test because the test results were the same as results I'd had done when I was like 16 stone and eating a really unhealthy diet not exercising and here I was eating a very lean diet really great diet I mean I don't even drink coca-cola on a regular basis I left two drinks of Coca-Cola a year maybe, that's it. I, I really don't do anything too bad, um, except to eat a lot now, because <laughs> it's locked down. And they looked at that and they said, your cholesterol is 6.5, and your result three years ago was 6.5 when you were heavier. And when you were heavier again, it was still 6.5. Something's wrong here, because your diet is a very good, clean diet now, so that shouldn't be happening. So they said, let's have a look at it. And sure enough, I was genetically high cholesterol. So they put me on the stroke cocktail, aspirin to keep my blood thin, um, Ramipril, I think it is, to keep my blood pressure steady, and uh, statin at night to keep my, blood, my um, cholesterol down. I was lucky in a sense that I found out I had genetically high cholesterol. So hopefully it'll keep me a little. I've now been on the statin, it'll be fine. It's a new generation statin, so don't believe the rumours you hear. Some of the statins now actually prevent cancer and stuff. So it's a new generation, so it's different. I walked out of that, and the only thing we could put it down to was the pill. So I was using the pill, A, not to get pregnant, and B, to regulate the hormones because the perimenopausal was getting worse. And like I said, my moods were starting to swing really bad. So that's why I went on the pill. So I'm honestly telling you ladies out there, please, please don't. If you're a doctor prescribed it to me, a doctor in Salons Medical prescribed it to me and said, take the pill at 46 years of age. Yeah, it's fine. That'll do you for your, your HRT replacement. You're too young for HRT. Do this instead. And that's what caused my stroke. That's, the doctor said, I can't put it in writing, but there's nothing else. 
you were fit as a fiddle, you should have never had that stroke. She said, I couldn't quantify. Normally we'd say that somebody who smoked or had an unhealthy diet, there'd be a one in 20 chance they have a stroke. I can't quantify yours because the odds are way stacked against it. So we put it down to the pill. So obviously after that, the good news was, I'm just adjusting my seat to apologise. Um, it's a very hard seat and it hurts my bum after a while. Um, so what we did then was they sent me home. I lost seven pounds from that stroke, which was not the ideal way to lose a half stone, trust me. Um, but I came home and I started looking after myself and I was fine, perfectly fine. I started back to my swimming two weeks after my stroke because I didn't want to let. I was very tired. I was fall asleep in the evenings. My kids were absolutely amazing. So I'd shout out my thank you to them in this half of the video. Um, but I did notice, like, suddenly I realised I'm not getting a period. So I wasn't getting a period after, after the stroke. And I started getting panic attacks. So in my head was the stroke and I was panicking about life and death and stuff and then the doctor said to me give it a, give it four or five months for your body to get back to normal don't jump to the conclusion that you're having a stroke or that you're having um, menopause she said not having any more strokes I'm done and um, she said don't don't jump to that she said please 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 she said just relax enjoy your swimming and your doing your thing don't go back to work of course I did go back to work because I'm a single woman I don't have any knight in shining armour. We live in Ireland. They're Aegis and Tinfoil on a donkey, if they're lucky. Otherwise, they have a rocking horse because some of them are like child and children. Um, so I don't rely on anybody. I had to do it myself, so I had to go back to work, which was great for me. I did go back to work, and it was great for my brain function. Got my brain thinking again and working again and got my cognitive thought behaviour back up. You'll notice sometimes in videos, I do stumble on words that I actually know or I forget words that I actually know. And that's small price to pay for still being here you know it's and it happens to a lot of women at my age anyway without having a stroke so it's probably just menopausal so that was that no more periods periods never appeared it went to November 2018 and it was a year since I'd actually had a period which was when I was on the stroke on the, on the, the pill and my doctor informed me um, well because of your age it's two years really we wait for two years because at your age, you're so young, going through this, that they could appear back again. And I went, oh, Jesus Christ, no, because if anybody knows me, I had my daughter when I was 24, and that was it. I knew I was never having kids again. Never. That was it. I never wanted any more. That was it. I had it, my gentleman's family. So I was really, like, freaked out. I was going, I'm, I'm in the menopause. Fantastic. No more periods. Yay. Happy freaking. I was so delighted but I wasn't prepared for the mood swings. The mood swings, the hot flashes, the cold flashes. Nobody tells you about the cold flashes. Nobody, I'd never heard about that before. And I was lying in bed and over a series of, of a, a week, I was going, why is my back cold? And I had the quilt shoved in behind my back and I was wrapped up in it and I was still shivering. Like, you know when they say somebody walked over your grave, it's that, but it was cold. And I just thought, what is going on with me? And I mentioned it to the doctor and he said, yeah, he says, that's menopausal syndrome, as well, uh, symptom, symptom, symptomatic of menopause as well. So it is a menopausal syndrome, sy symptom. And I just thought, oh, Jesus, great. I've not had headaches, thank God. Um, although I do panic slightly if I get some sinus, I go, is this another stroke or is it my sinuses? It's usually my sinuses. I'm still coping mentally with the fact that I went into menopause right when I had a stroke. I don't have that anger in me anymore. I have great relief. I don't have that anger in me anymore. Um, but what's transpired over the two years I've had this menopause is a lack of interest in men and a kind of, yeah. Hmm. And I found myself sometimes, without revealing too much, when I've been on dates and if I have decided to spend the evening with the gentleman, which is my right as an independent free woman, liberated 2020, um, I'm just like, yeah, okay, because I'm not interested. I, you know, I keep saying, when the right one walks in that door, I'll know. I'll know he's serious. Until then, they're all just little play things, and I become like, I won't say Samantha, a sex and city, I'm not quite that bad. But one thing about the menopause is you lose interest in it. I don't even date anymore now. I stopped dating last year, early last year, and I just, I don't bother anymore. I just can't 
cope with the emotions I'm having with menopause, the body changes I'm having with menopause, the mental and the personality changes I'm having with menopause. I can't cope with all of that. Right now it's about me. And it's like, I'm sorry, I can't let you in here at this moment because I have put on about a stone in menopause weight, which I know is menopause weight, which is probably going to be difficult to shift. So I'm never going to go back down to it as lean as I was. I'll try my bloody damnedest and I hope I will. And you can lose menopause weight. It's just harder. But I have put up a stone and a half since this lockdown. It's like, shit, I really have. I've gone crazy during this lockdown eating. We all have. I've allowed that today. I kind of got up over the weekend and I decided this has to end because now I'm worried about my health. I'm now sit sitting here going, I'm now obese on the scale. And I know I don't look that big to you guys. I hold it in my boobs and my belly. So I hold it there and I'm like a little apple. You know, my legs are thin, my arms are thin, my face is not as thin as it should be, um, but, and that's where I'm holding it. Um, I found I was, incre I've been incredibly lethargic. I can't listen to drama, rants, raves. I, it's not that I can't listen to it because I have more sense and I don't. I've always been kind of like that. I just go eh, and walk away from it. This, it irritates me. It gets me agitated. I actually feel physically panicky and I'm like get me out of here what I have to go I have to go I have to go I have to get out of here I have to get out of here so I sometimes have problems going to big events I'm not going to lie over the two years the menopause um I will be doing a second half to this video which will be more individual symptoms and going through them um but I just want to say to any woman out there going through it you're not alone and it is a very emotional time it's a time when you feel you lose your spark you do. It's terrible to say, I'm sorry. But you feel like you've lost yourself. You're going, where was that girl? Where's she gone? This woman has left who's a raven lunatic and who just feels pressure all the time. So forgive me, because it is, it is an emotional topic. I'm not going to lie, and I'm going to be very straight with you here. There's going to be a second part to this video. And I just want to say, you're not alone out there. This is normal to feel this way because I thought I was going fucking crazy. I thought I have a mental illness. Oh God, now I knew it. I do suffer from anxiety. That's been all my life. It's fine. I cope with it. It's grand. But this was worse. This was an emptiness. Something's, it's, I can't describe it. It's a void. And you sort of get the rug pulled from under you and knocked. The confidence gets knocked. And I see these ladies, you know, on Instagram going through the menopause all fabulous and glamorous and I'm thinking I wish that was me for the first year of my menopause I looked great the second year not so much so I let myself go because my energy levels dropped my anxiety rose and I got very lethargic and it's tough it's very tough mentally and emotionally and nobody prepares you for that nobody prepares you for the actual physical emotional mental side of it we've all heard of the hot sweats and everything else but we haven't heard of the stress and distress it causes and the loss of yourself and the, the loss of your sexuality as well I would always been a, a, a very sexual woman in so far as very you know men have said to me you're very sexy and now I'm good I took the last thing I feel is sexy honestly that's I've so I've, I've I'm trying to find me again these videos that I do on beauty, yes, I'm working on all of this because I'm starting to love on myself again. But you guys out there who watch this, and I always say this at the end of the video, and I'm going to say this. You guys make me so happy when I do these videos and I see them go up and I see you liking them and loving them and commenting on them. That means the world to me because it means I'm still relevant somewhere in this world. That's what happens when you go through menopause you start to feel irrelevant. You start to feel invisible. Men don't look at women in at 50. You know, they, they, don't, they look at women in their early 40s and they look at women in their 30s, but they don't look at women in their 50s. And you feel like you're unheard. So, honestly, from the heart, you guys make me feel heard. And I really appreciate that so much more. 
I will do the second part of this video and go clean up my tears. And I will just say to you, stay safe, stay happy, stay well. And if you're going through the menopause and you're having a tough ass time, comment below. I'm going to put my email up as well, message. You're not alone. You're honestly not alone. And you're not going crazy. You're not going mad. You haven't got depression. You're a little bit depressed that in, in that moment because of the hormones. It's not a mental illness. There's nothing wrong with you. It's, it's a life passage. It's a right passage. And I am starting to come out the other end of it now. I'm starting to go, no, I need to get my shit together again. And these videos, and you guys have have paid a big, big, big part in that, a huge part in that. So I thank you all and I love you all. Thanks for watching and apologies for the crying. <laughs> My mascara is not running. I have no makeup on today, just a bit of mascara and it's like, please don't run. <laughs> I love you all. Take care of yourselves. Look after one another and there will be another part of this video and we'll go more in depth with these wonderful things us women have to go through. I swear to God, the next life I'm coming back as a man. God, I go through this shit again. Those efforts as we say in Ireland had it so bloody easy oh <laughs> what can you do look I'm still in here somewhere I've just got to get her out again I'm still in here I'm still the same person I've just got to find her again and dig her out and dust her off so thanks for watching <laughs>